Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to focus on the installation and simple configuration of the LRS Universal Print Driver. We're not going to get into detailed, advanced options of changing jobs as they come in that aren't printing correctly. That's going to be in the next video. This is a Universal Print Driver that LRS has created that actually addresses multiple different hardware vendors. So, for instance, with an HP or Ricoh Universal Print Driver, those universal print drivers are generally specific to those brands, whereas the LRS universal print driver spans across multiple brands. We try to target everything. Now, we don't hit every single printer with every single feature that, that exists, but the far majority of the normal printing can be addressed with this LRS universal print driver. This is great for areas where you have multiple different print vendor hardware and you're trying to pull print to that hardware. Say, for instance, you have an HP Universal Print Driver assigned to your pull print queue, and you want that print queue to go to a Rico device, to be able to pull print to a Rico device, or any vendor, Lexmark, whatever the case may be. If you mismatch print queue print drivers, they usually work. Sometimes they don't. The LRS print driver seems to work a little bit better, and the best part about it is it's pretty configurable. Now, what are we talking about when we talk about the LRS Universal Print Driver? There's a, a couple components to this driver. There's the actual driver itself that is served to the desktop, which effectively creates an XFF file, a simple file that's meant to come over to the VPSX server and get processed from there. So we don't do all the rendering and processing on the desktop side. That gives us the ability to make a lot of changes and do a lot of custom things in the print job itself without a fully rendered PCL job that a normal print driver would give us. Another component is the actual filter itself. The filter goes into the print queue and that accepts the XFF job and does some things with it. Now we have a filter control file that goes right along with the filter. The control file gives us configuration options and areas to put in paths to various profiles and watermarks and stamps, that type of thing. We also need a transform, any transform, installed on the VPSX server. And then we have a filter PJL command file, which is a little bit more advanced. We're going to spend a little bit more time on that in the next video. The LRS driver itself will be added to your VPSX admin console under Print Server and Windows Drivers. You would click Add. Start the wizard. Obviously, we need the PDM agent installed on the machine that we're running this from. The wizard is going to start like it always does for any other driver. And we're going to choose the INI file that comes along with the software that was shipped to us from LRS. What does that look like? As we look in the extracted version of the software that we download as a customer, when we request our maintenance, download our file and extract it, we're going to go into VPSX for Windows R3, Client Components, and LRS UPD. What we find in here is some of the things that we talked about in the document, mainly the driver and the filter area. So right now with the driver, this is what we're referencing when we're uploading to the VPSX admin console to get this driver into our system. That's the first step. So we're selecting this LRS UPD INF, which is in this location in our extracted software. We select the only option we can here. I already have one set up, so I'm going to hit no on this, but you would just install this as normal, and you would end up with your LRS print driver in here. And what I would suggest is to modify this driver package in two different ways. One, to turn everything on and default to black and white, and one to turn everything on and default to color. What we find is customers prefer to have two different personal print queues when they're doing pull print in their environment, one that defaults to color and one that defaults to black and white. That's where the different driver comes in that we just talked about. Next, we're going to look at the actual print queue and what that looks like on the VPSX system. We're going to right-click Admin Update on whatever queue we want. We're going to need to assign these configurations to every print queue in our environment that is using this LRS print driver. So in other words, we're going to have some filter options. 
and we're going to reference the LRS Universal Print Driver in the driver area here. So to start, we obviously want to pick our Universal Print Driver here. As you can see in this particular queue, for testing purposes, I am redirecting this queue to the VPSX server into the null queue. So it's effectively going to look like it printed. We'll get a successful and all that good stuff. But I don't have it anywhere physically that I want the job to actually come out. Now under the filter, this is how we're going to configure our filter. Again, XFF job, we're calling the LRS Universal Print Driver executable. Where are we getting that from? In our software here, we have the LRS Universal Print Driver executable and the control file. On Windows, this is what I would need, these two files. And I would put these along with my PGL command file into my LRS root, VPSX root, filter, LRS UPD. I would throw those files in here. Now, before I do that, I'm going to want to edit my control file. I'm going to create a backup of this file, and I'm going to edit my control file to point to all the places in my system where my software resides. So let's take a quick look here at what we're seeing in this control file. We have the path to our transform executable. NLRS CVDR EXE is our transform executable. Generally, those transforms will install when you install a transform in the root of the drive that you picked, so C or D or whatever. LRS convert one. And under convert one, we obviously have the NLRS CVDR EXE. Our profile directory, we're going to configure that for where our MFF is. And we would change that to this location. The root of convert1 is where our dot profiles are, as you can see here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my profiles from my install directory, and I'm going to drop these profiles into my convert1, which is the location referenced by this file. So my profile dir is this. Now my PJL command file, where does that reside? My PJL command file resides in my filter area that I've created. And as you can see, I'm going down line by line and I'm modifying the paths to match where they reside on my system. Normally I'm going to leave PCL by default here. I would have to have a good reason to change that. Watermarks. Again, I'm going to go back to my downloaded software and grab the watermarks directory. I'm going to put that in my LRS convert one wherever the transforms are installed. Drop that in there, and I'm going to change the path here. What I like to do, the reason I'm changing these directories to this area, is I like to keep everything that has to do with the transform in one spot. Watermarks, stamps, profiles, all in one spot, so we don't have to go all over the place looking. The same idea for the stamps here. I drop my stamps directory from my downloaded files into my convert1 directory, and I'm referencing that with my control file. Default manufacturer, obviously the most popular manufacturer of printers in your environment you're going to want to put in here. And then we're going to save the file. Now I have my original file still that I backed up. I'm going to take my control file that I just edited, I'm going to make sure of that. This is the file I just edited, and we're going to copy that over to our filter LRSUPD area as well. This is the filter that's going to be referenced by every queue using this driver. So back to the filter area, we can see this is the directory structure we just created, and we dropped our executable in there. So we're referencing that executable when we get XFF data. And as you can see, In the argument here, we are referencing our control file that we copied over after we modified. This is ultimately going to convert any, any XFF file that comes in is going to convert to a PCL file. And that PCL file is then going to be delivered to the printer. On page 15 of the manual, we have the LRS UPD 
filter parameters and we can just check out the filter arguments here, see what they mean. As far as minus D, that's debugging. And we can see that that's on for my filter. And I'll generally leave that on until I'm confident that all of my print jobs that I'm testing are coming out correctly. Now that I've set up my driver on my system and I've set up the filter for on the queue, I now need to take a couple steps on the client workstation. We need to make these files available to our desktops. We're going to have to push out this certificate to all the desktops that are utilizing the LRS UPD. This configures LRS as a trusted publisher in Windows. This is a legitimate certificate and this is required for Windows to install our software. We have to be a trusted publisher. The way we do that is we click on the certificate, hit install certificate, configure it for the local machine, and we're going to place the certificate in the trusted publisher store. Once I've done that, my driver will install successfully on my client workstation. I'm going to right click on the queue that I've configured all this in, and I'm going to hit command connect. And the web helper or the print helper here is the plugin for the PDM agent that we have installed. As you can see, it's installing and it's successful. We're going to run print management.msc. And we can see the printers here. My print queue was installed. And we're going to print a test job to it. Already selected, I'm going to print. And now I'm going to go back in and take a look at the job. You can see the job just came in. It printed successfully. And now it's in the null queue. Here's the job it just printed. Now what I'm going to see here, again, since I'm using the LRS UPD as my print queue, this can obviously be any print queue pointing to any printer. This is currently just pointing to null. I'm not physically printing right now. This job, the retain job, is the actual XFF file that came in. So this is the original file that came in. If I want to look at this, I can see a few points of data about this file. Obviously, most of it I can't read in this viewer. However, there's some information here. However, on the null side, once the job reaches there, once it's printed, this is after the transformation. This is now a PCL job, so I would need a PCL viewer to see this. So that's the initial installation and configuration of the LRS UPD. Obviously, there's a lot more to get into as far as when your jobs are printing, and not coming out correctly. Say you have the job coming out of an HP correctly, but not out of a Rico, or maybe some device with a border isn't correct, or a font, or whatever the case may be. There's some advanced configuration and customizations that we can make for every printer in your environment. It takes a little bit to configure it, but suffice it to say, you will end up with a print driver that's universal. We'll get about 80 plus percent of your fleet on one driver, no problem. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you in the next one.